G'day guys, how's it going? Good to see you again. Um, the time has come, actually the time came a while ago but I'm getting round to it now, to do some basic maintenance on the 180 you see here behind me and I thought that that would be a great opportunity to make a couple of how-to videos on how to do some basic maintenance on your car. What we're going to be covering today is how to do a spark plug change and then later on in the video I'll show you how to gap a plug. Uh, if you enjoyed the content in today's video, please don't like, make sure you don't comment, and certainly don't subscribe, but also don't do what I tell you to do. Hope you're doing well. Alrighty, so this is the car and then we the motor that we're going to be demonstrating the uh, spark plug change on today. This is my 1993. Nissan 180SX with a red top SR20 DET engine inside it. This is just a little uh, two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine that was found in the Nissan Silvia range. Uh, gee, good day neighbor's dog. Uh, this one's a great one to do the spark plug demonstration on because they're really accessible. Uh, they're hanging out just underneath all these coil packs up the top. Now I would be demonstrating this spark plug change on cylinder number one, but I uh, was a bit of a dingus when I was younger. Still I'm a bit, but a bit more of a dingus when I was younger. And I over torqued the, uh, the bolt that was here on cylinder one and uh, snapped it off inside the valve cover. So I'm gonna be demonstrating on cylinder two um, to give you the full experience of changing a spark plug on an SR20. So the tools that we're going to be using to get out that little retainer bolt, need a ratchet obviously. I like to use a little extension. I'll show you why in two seconds. And a 10 mil. Uh, the reason I like to use an extension is so that I'm not swinging the ratchet right next to the valve cover. As you can see, I've already got a few little dents in here. Well, not really dents, little chips in the paint. Uh, we just don't need to add to that tally. There is uh, obviously no retaining bolt in the cylinder number one coil pack, so I can just lift that one up and out of the way. Makes it a bit easier to get to the cylinder two coil pack. Now there shouldn't be much torque on these at all. I All right, can already get the ratchet out of the way. Just wind that one out by hand. Get it to about there. Oh, a little bit further. And then we can lift that coil pack up and out of the way, which will give us access to the spark plug. Might just be able to see the head of it down there. So to reach down that tube and get the spark plug out, you're gonna want one of these things. This is a spark plug socket. They're nice and deep, because they need to fit over the head of a spark plug. And they've also got, see that little sort of shiny ring in the middle there? That's a magnet. And that's really, really handy because the spark plug's quite a ways down there. And if you were just to use a regular deep socket, you might be able to unwind it the whole way, but you wouldn't be able to pick it out. Uh, you could use needle nose pliers to do it, but it's much, much easier to use something like this. It also means that when you're putting in the new spark plug, you can lower it in gently. Uh, you don't just send it on down there. So using a little bit of a longer extension now, we're gonna reach down here and Start undoing that spark plug from its threads inside the head of the engine. And we can get that out of the way and probably do the rest by hand. And let's pull that one out and have a gaze. It's looking pretty good. So the spark plugs that I use for my SR20 are these. They're the BCPR7ES spark plugs from NGK. Now, you can use fancier, more expensive spark plugs. They make iridium tipped ones that you don't need to change nearly as often. But I actually like to use the cheaper plugs that you need to get it in there and switch over more often because I think it's a good idea to have a gaze at your spark plugs every once in a while and see what kind of condition they're in because they show you what is going on inside your engine. And I'll show you what I mean over here. This is the head of an SR20 motor. And that 
little guy sticking out right there, that is the tip of the spark plug. That is this bit right there, just facing that way. So it's got its head right there in the combustion chamber where all the explosions are happening. And you can look at it and see how it's running. So I have a, this is an example of a spark plug guide here. And you can see what kind of condition is happening inside your combustion chamber by looking at the spark plug. This is what it looks like if it's running a bit rich or you got oil deposits. This is what we're shooting for. And I'll just go grab my spark plug over here. You can see that we're looking pretty good. We don't have any oil on the plug. We don't have a big buildup of, um, of carbon on there. The uh, tip of the plug isn't melted or anything like that. And it isn't overly white indicating that it's getting a lean mixture and running really hot. So I'm pretty happy with how this plug is looking. I've already whipped out the spark plug from cylinder one. That one there. I just like to place those next to each other so I can see in a row how everything's running and see if one cylinder might be running a little bit different from the rest of them. And then it might be the case that that um, fuel injector needs some attention or it might indicate something else. So installing the spark plug into the car is a very easy process. Just pop it back on in here into our spark plug socket. And you notice I don't have the ratchet attached to my extension there just yet. Come on over here. We're going to carefully just drop it down this hole. I'm going to do this bit by hand. So wind it in there as far as we can by hand. And you see now I'm not actually turning anymore. This is what we call bottomed out. Um, so how do you know how much further to turn this to uh, get it torqued down correctly. Well, they make a little diagram for you, which I'll show you now. So this is a fresh spark plug that hasn't been installed yet. And this is one that we've just taken out of cylinder two. So you see that there's this ring, this washer ring that goes around the, uh, the base of the threads here. You can see here, it's nice and plump and round. And on the one that's been installed before, it's been flattened out. So this little crushable washer is here to seal all of the good explosion gases inside the cylinder where we want them. But how do we know how to get the right amount of crush on it? Well, NGK is nice enough to make a little diagram for us. There are two kind of plugs out there, generally speaking. There's this kind that has this sort of, con you can see just on the tip of my nail right there, this conical, conical sloped edge to it. This is the kind that we're dealing with over here with this crush washer on it. You can see it's a crush washer because it has a line through the center there. So after we've bottomed out the plug, just doing it up hand tight on the extension without the ratchet, if we had a conical type shaped um, uh, seating surface, we would need to do an extra 1 16th turn because we have this crush washer type, we need to do another half to another two thirds turn to get this amount of crush. All right, so I'll show you how we go about doing that. We've got the extension in there. It's bottomed out, it's hand tight. And then we're gonna grab our ratchet. And then what I like to do is I like to stick it out. Oh, that was a little bit over. I like to stick it out straight in front of me there. Just so it's lined up with tension on it. It's lined up backwards and forwards with the motor. And then I know that to do another half rotation will be to there, and two thirds is where I usually like to shoot for, which is over here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. And two thirds, that's it. We can come off of there now. Smack our tool back down on the bench. Grab our coil pack, put it back down there. See, I've numbered all these as well to make sure they always go in the right spot. And then we go about winding this guy back in. So I just do these by hand these days. I used to over torque everything. Now I only over torque some things. And there we go. That's nice and in place, not going anywhere. 
and that spark plug is changed. So that's how easy it is. There's really not a whole lot to it. Um, I know that on the back of all NGK spark plug casings is that little diagram about how far they want you to screw them in after they've been bottomed out. But yeah, give it a go yourself. It's not that tricky. All right, now I'm gonna demonstrate how you gap a plug. So, what we're referring to when we're gapping a plug is either changing or confirming the distance between the bottom side of this arm right there and the top of this electrode right there. It is between these two surfaces that a little lightning bolt happens, which ignites our air fuel mixture and makes the bang inside the cylinder. So the reason that we might want to change this gap and why we're doing it in our circumstance is I want to bring these two things just a little bit closer together so that we're guaranteed to get the lightning bolt to jump from one to the other. If that distance is a little bit too long and we're running uh, some boost like we are in my application, there's a chance that the lightning bolt might not be able to make the jump between those two surfaces and then the explosion doesn't happen. If you make them too close together, the lightning bolt might make the jump, but it might not be very, uh, well, it won't be very big and it might not be enough to get the air fuel mixture to ignite. And if they're touching, no lightning bolt's gonna be happening at all. So, straight out of the box, let's figure out how big this gap is. To do that, we have these things called feeler gauges. So, all these little bits of metal here are very exact thicknesses. You can see it that way. This one, for example, right here is point, let's see if I can get it so you can say, 0.65 of a millimeter thick. So, if we put it in here, and we feel, see I can actually feel that there's a little bit of a gap there. So we're going to look for the feeler gauge that goes in there and fits nice and snugly with just a little bit of drag on it. Alright, so I know it's going to be bigger than that. I'm going to be gapping these down to 0.7 of a mil. So let's see if an 8.5 fits, 0.85 of a mil. See, I can just get it in there. I'm not forcing it in, but I'm just getting it in there. I can see that there's just a little bit of rock. Actually, when I rock it back and forth, the spark plug falls off. So, because obviously if I turn the spark plug that way, so I'll do it with the spark plug in my hand. If I turn it this way, it's going to make it tighten up on this. So we want to be really careful about just holding the spark plug loosely and then sliding it along. That slide's pretty easy. Let's go up to a nine. Uh, this one. Sorry, they're a little bit rusty. So let's see if we can fit the nine in there. Oh, see, I have to force it in. So that's a little bit too tight for me to call it a gap of 0.9 of a mil. So this plug is currently gapped between 0.85 and 0.9 of a mil. We want to be shooting for 0.7. So. The way that I go about this is I get out my point, oh, wrong direction, 0.7 feeler gauge. You can tell I got plugs with this one because we've got this nice little shiny bit along here. Get all the other ones out of the way. We don't need to worry about those. And then we get into our hitting implement. This is my hitting implement. They say to never use these as a hammer, but by golly, this is just the thing that I love for gapping plugs. I've used, and I recommend you do too, use the same thing every single time you gap a plug. These just have a nice weight to them. I'm not using it as a full on hammer. I'm just letting it drop onto the top of the plug. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to do a bit of that, get my feel gauge, pop it in there. We're still very loose, a little bit more. Now this can be quite a tedious process sometimes. Sometimes you gotta hit it a whole bunch and then you'll, you know, it'll do nothing. Then you'll give it a good smack and you can tell it just goes way too far. But when it does go way too far, I get a screwdriver here, a flathead that I've filed down to be a point and I put it in there and I just wiggle it back and forth to open it back up again. All right, so I'm gonna take you along for the journey with this. Going a bit tight. Screwdriver in there. Open it up just a little bit. Still a bit tight. 
a little bit more. All right, now we can just fit it in there, but I still think that's a little bit tight. Now I'm actually gonna use the feeler gauge just to open it up a little bit. Probably not best practice, but you know. There we go. So I've just got just a tiny bit of drag on this surface here. And that tells me that the gap between that center electrode and the outer arm is just about bang on 0.7 of a mil, which is perfect for our application. And there you have it. I hope this quick little video has cleared up any questions you may have had about how to change spark plugs in your engine and uh, well, very specifically how to do them in an SR20 DET. But the same process applies for 99% of spark plugs out there that you might find. Uh, if you do have any more questions, as always, feel free to drop a comment down the bottom and I will be sure to get back to you. Uh, I also hope that this covered what's involved with and why we might want to change the gap on our spark plugs. Uh, hope you have a great day and until next time, take it easy. Hello puppy. Want to say hi to everyone? Come on. Oh, hello. Hello. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Mwah.